There are different methods of giving education to the deaf children. The method of teaching deaf children is not the same as hearing children. There are three methods of teaching the deaf children. First, oralism. Second, total communication. And third, educational bilingualism. I hope this is clear to you. Now we are going to discuss about oralism. Since ancient times till now, different philosophies have been followed in deaf education. A large multi-country conference of deaf educators was held in Milan, Italy in the year 1880. Before that, sign language was used in deaf education. In deaf schools, there were many deaf educators and deaf students. They would stay in the hostel and use sign language. There was no restriction in using the sign language. Later on, in the year 1880, the conference was held in Milan, Italy. This conference was attended by representatives from many countries. On one side, there were a group of special educators who believed that the sign language will not be useful for the development of the deaf people. They will face so many challenges. At the conference, the representatives from all the countries were hearing. Only one representative was deaf. The aim of this conference was to ban sign language and implement the use of oralism. At the conference, deaf educators from across the world gathered to discuss oral versus manual education. They desired to make deaf people as hearing people. They wanted them to speak and hear. After deliberation, the Congress endorsed oralism and passed a resolution banning the use of sign language in schools. Before that, deaf people were educated and empowered. The Milan conference had a major impact on deaf people at the time. Many were forced to abandon using sign language and use oralism instead. The educators of the deaf started following oral method to educate the deaf students and it was followed across the world. At the conference, there was Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet on one side. He supported an education that utilizes sign language as a means of visual communication. He was in favor of the use of sign language by the deaf people. On the other side, there was Alexander Graham Bell and his colleagues who were the supporters of the oralism. They both followed their method and spread its use among their countries. It was a huge controversy over sign language versus oralism. We see in various courses or programs relating to deaf education that oralism has been given so much importance as compared to sign language. This creates confusion among the people. There should not be the objection to use sign language or oralism. Sign language and oralism both has its own value. It is important that the deaf students should be given the option to use sign language or oralism. The deaf educators should teach the deaf students as per the methods which is appropriate for them. It is important for them to understand the necessity of the deaf students. They should not talk only in favor of one option and reject another because there are few deaf students who can partially hear. They have mild hearing loss or they are hard of hearing. So they can go for oralism approach. So it is important to give options to the deaf students. We should not be rigid and follow the system of teaching that we have learned in the teacher training program. We have various methods of teaching in deaf education. There are so many options available. What important is 
the deaf children get proper education for their better life.